crowd was all of the non-Masons and the public at large. That which we, we must say to the crowd is we worship a God, but it is the God that one adores without superstition, unquote. So it appears that one of the purposes of this letter was to advise all of the top-ranking Masons that they were to concoct a story that the Masons worshipped the traditional God so that none could ever accuse them of worshipping a cherub, a nun god, by the name of Lucifer. In other words, they were to deny that Lucifer was their god whenever an outsider was smart enough to break through all of the secrets and figure it out. Well, of course, folks, they're sworn to secrecy. They have to deny anything about the true secrets of their order. I mean, what kind of logic is this? That's plain as the nose in your face. You must understand that when you ask a Mason a question about Freemasonry, he's going to tell you a lie because he is sworn to secrecy, and he is sworn by blood oaths. And I know that by the time they've reached the 32nd degree, they've taken at least 32 different oaths swearing them to secrecy. Minimum. So, you should know this already. Now, let's continue, but I'm going to go back and read that part over. It appears that one of the purposes of this letter was to advise all of the top-ranking Masons that they were to concoct a story that the Masons worshipped the traditional God so that none could ever accuse them of worshipping a cherub, a nun god, by the name of Lucifer. It's very important. In other words, they were to deny that Lucifer was their god whenever an outsider was smart enough to break through all of the secrets and figure it out as I and many others have done, as A. Ralph Epperson has done. So the secret inside the Masonic order is that Lucifer is their secret god. Any non-Mason today who attempts to explain to any of their Masonic friends or relatives that this is the secret inside the Lodge will be met with an instantaneous denial. Every Mason, whether they know the secret of the Lodge or not, will obviously deny the accusation because they must. Mr. Pike continued, quote, You may repeat it to the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be by all of us initiates of the high degrees maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine, unquote. You see, Albert Pike at that time was at the head of all the lodges of Freemasonry of the world and at the head of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry in the United States of America. Here Mr. Pike seems to indicate that it is the 30th, 31st, and 32nd degrees that are to be taught the Luciferian doctrine, the direct evidence that the honorary 33rd degree is formally taught that Lucifer is the great architect of the universe will be presented later. But here Pike seems to say that that lesson is to be taught at an earlier degree. Quote, if Lucifer were not God, would Adonai, the God of the Christians and the Jews, and his priest calumniate, which is defined as spreading false and harmful statements about or to slander, would they calumniate him? Pike makes two incredible statements about Lucifer. One, he is considered to be a god, and two, the priests and the rabbis have it all backwards and are all slandering his name. As has been illustrated, the Bible states that Lucifer is nothing more than a fallen cherub. He's not a god. Yet Mr. Pike clearly states that Lucifer is a god. Now how can that be? And secondly, those who claim that he is the wicked one are slandering him. Those individuals have it all wrong. And Mr. Pike continued, quote, The true and pure philosophic religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai, unquote. Adonai also spelled, well, in the first place here, it's spelled A-D-O-N-A-Y, and he says Adonai, also spelled A-D-O-N-A-I, is the Hebrew word for God. To show that Pike was referring to the God of the Bible, he wrote this in his book entitled Morals and Dogma, quote, Adonai, the rival of Baal and Osiris, unquote. In other words, Adonai is Typhon. That's an aside from me, folks. That's not written in this book. But as you've been listening to the series that I've given you, you know that Adonai, if this is true, if he's the rival of Baal and Osiris, then he is Typhon. As has been illustrated, Osiris is the sun god, and the sun has been shown to be a symbol of Lucifer. Adonai is the rival of Lucifer, 
both in the Bible and in the writings of Albert Pike. Quote, but Lucifer, God of light and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the God of darkness and evil, unquote. And here, once again, Mr. Pike writes that Lucifer and Adonai are rivals and that the religious world has it all backwards. Lucifer is the good God and Adonai is the God of evil and darkness. The author would like to interrupt the narrative to make an observation, and this observation is being made by a Ralph Epperson, not me. He wrote this book. That authenticity of that letter by Albert Pike that was just quoted has been questioned by a variety of writers. It has been reported that Mr. Pike made these comments in an encyclical, hand-carried, to the meeting of 23 Supreme Councils of the World on July 14, 1889 in Paris, France. This author, meaning A. Ralph Epperson, is willing to concede that the only evidence for the contents of this encyclical consists of it being quoted in a book written by a Frenchman named A. C. de la Rive, entitled La Femme et la Infant dans la Ranc Mecon, Mecon Nuri Universelle. I'm not a French speaker, folks, so that's the best I can do. My tongue doesn't do those things or at least I haven't practiced to make my tongue do those things. That title translated from French to English means The Woman and Child in Universal French Masonry. A copy of that page that contains that quote and the cover of the book has been supplied to this author, meaning A. Ralph Epperson, by a concerned researcher who had someone locate the book in France for him and make copies of the pertinent pages. The author has read another book that contains the English translation of that encyclical. That book is entitled Occult Theocracy and was written in 1933 by Edith Starr Miller. She cites the book by Mr. De La Rive as her source. She obviously believed that the letter was true and contained the actual thoughts of Mr. Albert Pike. He said it in so many other places, including in his own book, Morals and Dogma, that I also believe that the letter is true, and now I'm speaking as myself, William Cooper. In other words... Going back to A. Ralph Epperson's words, in other words, the only source for the letter is a Frenchman who quotes it in his book and not Mr. Albert Pike himself. It must be assumed that Mr. Pike, if he were alive today and was asked whether the letter was his, would deny that he ever wrote such an encyclical, whether or not he had written it, because he must. He's sworn to maintain the secrets. But the reader is admonished to remember that if he did indeed worship Lucifer and wrote the encyclical, he would certainly have to deny it, so that answer would tell the researcher nothing. It is the contention of this writer, A. Ralph Epperson, and others who are attempting to decipher the secret symbols of the Masonic Order that a small percentage of the Masons know that all of the symbols inside the lodge refer to Lucifer. And I am one of those who believe this, folks. My research has shown it to be absolutely true, and I could prove it. And I've already... I've already uh, given you direct quotes from many Freemasons that already prove it. And it must be remembered that these Masons must, of necessity, do all that they can to deny any, any revelation of any of the secrets of the Lodge. And certainly anyone today who believes that the contents of the letter are a fraud would do all that they could to discredit anyone who said that the thoughts were the actual thoughts of Pike. However, this writer, meaning A. Ralph Epperson, is of the opinion that Mr. Pike did indeed worship Lucifer and is not basing that conclusion on just this one letter. Notice that Mr. Pike has written elsewhere that he considered Lucifer to be the secret god of the Masonic Lodge, and I, William Cooper, have also found that to be true, not only in one or two, but in many instances. So it is not essential to this writer's, A. Ralph Epperson's, position that this encyclical be proven to be valid. It is the author's contention that there is ample evidence from other sources, including from Masons other than Mr. Pike, that the secret god inside the Masonic Lodges is Lucifer, and I wholeheartedly occur with Mr. Epperson. That evidence is available to anyone who cares to locate it. But there is another Mason who knows that Lucifer is the good god of a particular segment of the Masons, Pike's fellow 33rd degree Mason, Manly P. Hall also felt that this god was a god of good. He wrote in his book entitled The Secret Teachings of All Ages, quote, Sun worship played an important part in nearly all the early pagan mysteries. The solar deity was slain by wicked ruffians who personified the evil principle of the universe. 